Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. Again, I'd like to thank you so very much for joining me, listening to our weekly devotional here on Spreaker, or you may be looking at it in Facebook, YouTube, or anywhere else on the Internet. Of course, it's always an honor and pleasure to bring you my thoughts each and every week on a Bible teaching with the sole goal of building you up in Christ. Before I start my opening monologue, I'd like to go ahead and, of course, welcome my friend and brother here, uh, Donovan, to the show. How are you doing, Mike? Doing great. Another great, beautiful day. The Lord bless me to wake up. Oh, my God, man. It's gorgeous today, man. I'll tell you. Yeah. I think we need to be at the beach. We do. <laughs> Other than the heat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a hot one today, but you know what? You're right. Every day is a blessing. Let me get started on my opening thoughts. You know, last week, I took we took a look at the fifth and sixth trumpet judgments of God from Revelation chapter 9. If you recall, we discussed in detail the fifth trumpet judgment, which I call the judgment of the demonic beings. Just to refresh your memory, this judgment was about a star, of course not a literal star, but an angel, that goes down to the abyss. And I described the abyss as a bottomless pit, a deep hole, or even some scholars just call it hell. Some scholars believe that the abyss is the center of the earth that has no bottom and basically everything is up. For this judgment, heavy smoke comes out of the pit along with these locust-type creatures. Now we know that these creatures are not real locusts because real locusts eat only plant life. And what we read from these verses in Revelation chapter 9, these creatures do not. They only attack those people on earth that are not sealed and protected by God. Very personal and very scary. Then last week I introduced the sixth trumpet judgment, which I call the judgment of the eastern Euphrates. To summarize this one, it's about four angels that have been hanging around for thousands of years up to this very moment to be released onto the earth and basically wipe out one third of mankind. Now I want to go into a little bit more detail about how this sixth judgment comes about. The Euphrates River, you've probably been there. The Euphrates River is traditionally been the religious, cultural, and territorial differences between the East and the West from the world. The Eastern part of the world is so vastly different than the Western part of this world. And in most cases, especially after the rapture, there will be no worship of one true God in the Eastern Euphrates. Most of the religion beliefs in this area, I would say, are Buddhist, possibly Hindus, or some form of Hindu, and of course Muslims. And it is, over, and it is also true that over 70% of the world's population lives east of the Euphrates River. China, right. India, right. Pakistan, all these large, large populated areas is east of the Euphrates. And what is interesting is when we take a look at this bold judgment in the upcoming weeks, we will learn that one of the judgments of God will be drying up this Euphrates River so that the armies that survive this judgment can cross over that river to fight God in, of course, the infamous Battle of Armageddon. Now, 50 to 60 years ago, it is literally, and you're a military man, it would literally be impossible to mount up an army of 200 million forces. Yes. Impossible. Logistically impossible. 50, 60 years ago, no chance. But in today's world, with the population explosion in these eastern nations, it is a reality today. Now I want to take a look at the troops that were described by John in this chapter. They were red, yellow, and blue breastplates with the riders having heads like lions with fire, smoke, and sulfur coming out of their mouths. <laughs> now that's a, that's a description that yeah. you can put your eyes around. These tails were like snakes, and these tails afflicted injury. This could be a picture of a tank with machine guns coming back. It kind of looks a little bit like a tail, and, and there's bombs in the front. This is a man, John, in the first century trying to describe 21st century battle and equipment. We may not have the whole picture. We may not understand all the details of what this judgment is all about. But there's one thing that we know for sure as a result of this judgment that many, many people will be dying from this. But, you know what, even after all that, I mean, you probably are sitting out there going, I still don't get it. 
Well, you know what? You really don't need to understand it completely. First of all, if you're a born-again Christian, you're not going to be here anyways. But second of all, we just need to understand that this judgment is real and it's going to happen. But you know, and Don is working the cameras right now, the real tragedy is verses 20 to 21 in Revelation chapter 9. Let me read them over to you again. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Verse 21, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Boy, that's hard for me to understand what that's all about. Mm. First of all, think about this during this time period. You see the de demonic locusts attacking the people. Three billion people dying from wars and other disasters. And you would think, by just witnessing this, that people would be flocking to the Lord, asking mm. questions, Lord recognizing His wrath and giving their lives to Him, looking for God, for security, for comfort, and especially for answers. But folks, that just doesn't happen. Mm. The world will be so anti-God and completely fooled by the demon, the Antichrist, and false prophet, that they will continue to refuse to repent. God has done everything He can to get the attention by inflicting them for five months with a painful sting to a massive killing, but there will still not be a change in mind and heart. These people would rather die in their sin than live for the Lord. Mm -hmm. They would rather die and spend eternity separated from God versus living with God. They would rather die in their sin than repent from their sin. I'm only thinking about this, I, mean, I was writing this, this week, uh, last week. Can you even imagine how God would feel knowing this? It's almost like having the perfect solution and being refused. Mm -hmm. Folks, we know we can never say that God is unfair. And we can never say that we didn't know. You know, and I don't know if I mentioned this last week. If I did, I'm going to mention it now. God even sent a mighty eagle to warn the people of these upcoming judgments back in Revelation 8, verse 13. Mm -hmm. God has given mankind every opportunity to repent and surrender to Him, but the people continue to live in their evil. At any time, these people could have turned their lives to Him, but as we just read, they choose not to. And the patience of God will not last forever. You know what, I've, I've said this many times during this series, but it's worth repeating one more time. God is loving, God is merciful, and God is full of grace. But the key is, God is also just. Mm. And justice without punishment, and you know this well, justice without punishment is no justice yep. at all. Mm -hmm. It's just idle threats. It's just a bunch of hot air. It means nothing. So these earth dwellers during this time will have no one else to blame but, the, but themselves for the situation they're mm. in. Folks, as we conclude these trumpet judgments, let me one more time summarize all of these trumpets of judgments of God from Revelation chapters 8 and 9. It started off with the judgment of hail and, and fire mixed with blood, in which one third of all the earth, trees, and grass were burned up. The next judgment, the number two, was the judgment of the seas, in which destruction comes, and one third of the sea creatures, one third of the ships, and most all the seas turned into blood. The third trumpet judgment is the judgment of the fresh waters, in which one third of the drinking water is contaminated and undrinkable. The next judgment from God, the fourth judgment, was called the judgment of darkness, in which one third of the day and night was completely dark. The fifth trumpet judgment, which we just discussed last week and today, was the judgment of the demonic beings, in which locusts, or what I call demons, rise from the abyss to torture the earth dwellers for five months. And finally, the sixth trumpet judgment, of course, is the judgment of the eastern Euphrates, in which one third of mankind will be wiped away from this earth. Folks, I am praying that an alarm goes off in your mind and in my mind, and we, as we learn more details about these judgments of God. Folks, what this means for you and I is we need to be bold in our faith. These judgments are real. 
a lot of pe pastors and teachers teach that no, they're just they're just things that are going on in this world today. No, they're not. First coming was real. Things that happened prior to the first coming was real. Things that's going to happen prior to Jesus' second coming that we're describing here in Revelation is also real. Folks, God's wrath is real, and the book of Revelation is real. So folks, let's put our feet to the faith today, and let's be a witness to God's love to someone we know. We don't want any of our loved ones to have to go through this wrath of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we thank you so much for your word. We know from our hearts, Lord, that you don't want any of your people, any of your creation, to go through your wrath. You want all people to turn to you and be saved. But Lord, unfortunately, the heart of many people in our world is wicked and hard. They don't recognize your love for them. And there are people in our inner world today that we know so well that also don't recognize your grace and mercy. Lord, we ask you again to help us be bold in our witness to others. Give us the courage, Lord, and the right words to sow the seeds of Jesus to our friends and family that currently don't live for you. Help us, Lord, to continue to be the light of you and a reflection of your love. We love you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed my opening thoughts today on the conclusion of the fifth and sixth trumpet judgments. Now, next week, I'm going to introduce the third and last set of judgments that are known as the bold judgments in Revelation chapter 16. This is actually the start of the, uh, of the, in the time of the Great Tribulation that actually begins in Revelation chapter 13. I hope that you're enjoying these opening monologues, but more importantly, I hope it's helping you grow in your love and devotion for God. As I've said many times before, even in judgment, God is loving and merciful. So please, make your plans to be here as we continue this series, this journey into the book of Revelation and understanding God's judgment. Of course, I want to continue to um, uh, encourage you to check out my Reflections Ministry Facebook page. Uh, I really appreciate all of you that's sharing the page. We hit 1900 yeah. starting today, yeah. which is a blessing. So we're getting more and more followers. I'm getting more and more comments. I don't know if you know this, Don. I'm up to about 150 comments a day on my Reflections Ministry Facebook page. And I would say 98% of them are all uh, positive, loving it. They're growing in the Lord. Folks, that's happening because of you. You're sharing it. You're the one that's showing people about it. And people are growing in Christ. So thank you so much for doing that. If you've never checked it out, and this is the first time you've heard of it, go to Facebook, Reflections Ministry Facebook page. Check it out. Like it. Follow it. And then, of course, hopefully sharing of it. I want to thank you again for listening to my opening monologue. Again, our goal here is to lift Jesus Christ up seven days a week. God bless you, and God bless your family. Bless you guys. Um, 150, huh? A day. Comments. Comments, yes. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm a witness to this. That is still not enough for you. That's <laughs> <laughs> still not enough. Oh, no. I mean, it was 1,500 comments. Yeah. I'd be happier. Maybe, yeah, I'd be happy. Because I, I guess some of the comments I'm hearing, a lot of it is yeah. just one word, like yeah. amen, amen yeah. or so true, or I love. But then I get some that message me outside mm -hmm. of the comments from things that says, wow, I needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. Or wow, I didn't recognize that or realize that. And all we do with these devotionals each and every day is just bring to light who God is, mm -hmm. the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, and then what our responsibility is in response to that love. Sure. And that's what it's all about. It's just giving us slight little tidbits of reminders of what a life each and every day is in living for Christ. Absolutely. And I think it's starting to resonate with the people. They're starting to We're in, right now I think we're in about 15, 20 different countries. Sure. I get a lot of I get a lot of messages from people in in Africa, Asia, Europe, everywhere that's saying that they're getting fed and they're enjoying it. So again, I can't thank the audience enough for sharing it and doing what they're doing to spread the word of God. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, as an analytical person, um, with which you are, I'm not really analytical. Um, you know, even when somebody does one word, that just to me, when even if it's a negative word, to me, that just tells me. Oh, you, you watch the show. Exactly. You know, that's exactly. the whole point. I, regardless how you feel about it, I'm glad you saw it. You know, it's so funny. One of the things I've, I've learned a lot from Donovan since being with him for almost two <laughs> years. years yeah. But one of the things I've really learned from this man is, is the fact that 
he, he stressed with me a long, a long time ago, and he continues to stress, and he's completely right. The key for people to want to listen to you is being consistent and giving good content. And if you do that on a daily basis, and your heart is in it for the people, not doing it for money or doing it for something else, but you're doing it because you just love the Lord, people gravitate yes. to that. And you know, like you said, you know, other pastors are trying to do the same thing, but they don't stay consistent. And they drop off. And they drop off. And you know, we started, we started basically these daily devotionals that I actually started posting back the first day of uh, June of 2017. 2017 yeah. So basically in 13 months, because we're almost in July, you know, it's only got 1,900 followers. Yeah. So it's like God had multiplied it because God has allowed us to be able to grow together in, in, in learning God's Word. So, again, it's just a blessing to be able to provide, you know, inspiration from God's Word each and every day. And you are doing a great job in spreading it to your right. family. And, 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 uh, and just real quick, with, with what's going on in the world today, there is so much suffering. And a lot of people are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they hate their job. And That's a great point. You know, I, I I don't get political on this right. show because I'm not into the politics. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's and, and, and it's not a political show. But when you see, like Donovan just said, the hatred. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't even go to a restaurant now without getting ha uh, harassed. And that's just one example of so much hatred on both sides of the lever. I don't care if you're Democrat, but it doesn't matter. The hatred is almost insanity in today's world. So when you do have something that's positive. Something that when you read it, you can actually smile about it instead mm -hmm. of getting angry about it. That's really important in today's right. world right. because it's just that, you know, I, I, I don't do a lot of Facebook looking at other yeah, things. things. I, I, I don't have the time yeah. like you yeah. don't and stuff like this. But when I do, I would say 90% of it is either politically induced, yeah. sexually induced, mm -hmm. or it's something that's really negative. So you're right what you just yeah. said. When you get something that actually just puts a smile, makes you happy, mm -hmm. and brings a little joy into your life, even for a, a brief second, yeah. that's that value. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, and unfortunately, every, you know, people go to, go to their job, they're droning every day, mm -hmm. and, you know, some people can't even go to church on Sundays like they would like to. That's true, because yeah. they work or whatever. Right. And, you know, and they're suffering in silence. So the little things that, that uh, we can do to help them and, and have the Lord guide us to them and open them up and give them this, an opportunity mm -hmm. to come to the Lord if you didn't know the Lord, I think is what uh, you're here for and you're being used as a tool. Oh, I totally agree. And, then, and, and what the folks out there need to understand is the power that they have. Because they can bring the same type of joy and this type of uh, uplift to their family, friends, and people they know. A lot of people that I that I talk to are part of groups, right. and they may have five, ten, fifteen thousand members in their groups and that type of stuff, and that's awesome. And what they do sometimes they take um, our posts from the daily devotionals and then they share it with them, and I get a lot of comments on that. So again, there's so many ways to use the positive of God's word to be something that's good <laughs> for sure. Whatever, everything else that's in this world on. is so negative. But uh, as, as you've been preaching, as we're in Revelation, is this not supposed to be like this? It's exactly. You know, that's the thing. We've, that's we've what been around. Remember, we, it, you know, we're in those days, this and you got to recognize plan. it. Right. You know, I, I always say this so many times because I guess I'm old. But <laughs> I lived on this world 40, 50 years yeah. ago, and so did Donovan. Well, not yeah. 50, but 40, yeah. 40 years ago. And the changes that we've seen in 40 to 50 Rapid. years is just absolutely dramatic. Mm -hmm. I would have never dreamed 40, 50 years ago that we we would be witnessing what we're seeing today in today's world. Mm -hmm. The anger, the hatred, mm -hmm. the absolute, I mean, not only in the United States, forget the United States, all over the, the world. world. I mean, right. I read Europe and what's going on there and the yeah. division there. And oh my gosh, it's just so much anger and protest and everybody hates and however. It's the evil. It's just, it's just mounting. It's like, right. but like you just said, God said this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. We talked about all the signs of the times. We talked about things, the the, the birth pains that's going to come in this last generation up to the time when Jesus comes back. And everything that we talked about, everything that you're seeing, is exactly what what God talks about in His Word. So, exactly. yeah, should we be surprised? No, no. no. But here's the bad point. Folks, it's not going to get better. <laughs> Unfortunately, the right. birth pains, you know, when you're pregnant, when you go from the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth month, the pains, get don't get, yeah. the pains don't get easier. They get more stronger. Right. So we know that this is not going to get any better. But for us who have surrendered our lives to Jesus, we can still live the joy-filled, hope-filled life 
and we can utilize things like this platform and others in order to share good news, something positive, you know, to folks that we love. Right. So you know, don't uh, don't despair. No. Of how it's supposed to be. It's go- This is going to be. It's going to get it worse, but it doesn't have to affect you in a way that's negative. It can affect you positive if you look at it in the light of how God sees it. God loves you perfectly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, on the uh, news front, how did our um, City Council meeting go. Oh yes, yeah. But for, for first of all, I want to thank every single. I've got a few comments mm-hmm. about uh, some of you that were praying yeah. uh, for our uh, Maria Valley City Council um, vote that happened last Tuesday night. Uh, there was a full house. Yeah. I couldn't even find a seat. Yeah, it was crazy. I even got there right before six o'clock, and there was already literally hundreds of people there. And here's the blessing. Um, we had a lot of folks that gave comments. Uh, there was a few negative, mostly positive, and the city council made the right decision. They really did. Marino Valley got a hand in that. They made the right decision. They voted five nothing to go forward with this awesome project, golf course project, uh, boys and girls club project, the, the new restaurant, the new clubhouse, and more importantly for me, the, the opportunity to be able to have church services here in that in that brand new area. So. Thank you for praying for that, number one. And if you are watching, you were there. Thank you for your inputs that uh, helped uh, getting the vote uh, to go favorably for this. So now, like Donovan and I were talking before we started this, now the work begins because now they're starting to do. They're getting their liquor license to get there started. They're they're going to start construction for the restaurant. Liquor license, yeah, for the yeah, for the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, liquor license for the restaurant, yeah. not for the church. <laughs> no, some people's going to say, "Whoa, wait, go to that church." <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like no. having blue nun in the Catholic church. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, so for the for the restaurant, and then they're already starting renovation, getting permits for the. Yeah. Clubhouse. I've already saw the bulldozers out there to redo the parking lot. So mm-hmm. it's starting. Oh, it's Lord, starting it's now. So, good. so God has opened the doors for this to happen. Hopefully in the month of July, I'll be able to sit down with the owners of the golf course and of course Eric, who's the landlord, mm-hmm. to talk to them about more details on the church and what's going to happen. And of course, on this show and Donovan and Donovan show as well, we will give you updates on where we're at, what's happening, and of course, I just want you to get excited for us. But most I need you to pray that now God opens up the doors for all these things to be negotiated out so we can have our church hopefully pre-launch services by the end of the year. Oh, amen. Because here's the, here's the goal, folks, and this is what makes it so exciting. The goal is they're going to open up Boys and Girls Club by the start of the school year, which is around wow. the Labor Day time period, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now kids are going to have somewhere to go and enjoy, learn golf. Play, right. have fun, do have homework, homework, all that. Awesome. I mean, so that's the goal for about September time frame to open up the Boys and Girls Club. The golf course scheduled right now, and then you know, schedules fluctuate at times. Is supposed to open at the end of the year. Yes. That includes the the, the eighteen holes, the, the golf course itself, the clubhouse, sure. and the five star restaurant. Within that restaurant is where the church is going to be, which is going to be on one side where we normally met. For our community meeting, mm-hmm. that's where the church is going to be, and hopefully the pre-launch services, which is basically getting the church organized, would open at the very same time as when the clubhouse and when the uh, golf course does. So it's going to be a huge buzz in the eastern end of Reno Valley, but it's going to be a huge buzz for the Inland Empire because this is a big, big um, plus. For this area. this area, not only Marino Valley, which puts Marino Valley definitely on the map. On the now map. it's not only going to be known as the base, <laughs> the yeah. large Air Force base. Yeah, right. We're going to be known as having probably the best boys and girls club in the in the yeah, Inland Empire, right. mm-hmm. and also probably one of the most the nicest golf course and restaurants in the area. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll have also one of the most devoted and God loving church also in the same yeah, place. Family, so, exactly. Um, exactly. So it's a great thing. So we will keep you posted mm-hmm. on all the developments, all the progress. Leading up to hopefully the end of the year. Um, my, my last question uh, uh, in regards to with the project, does this not prove that if you are faithful and in your faith and in your prayer, that the Lord does provide? Oh, absolutely. Because absolutely. You know, two years ago, like I said, when we started this show two years ago, we were on the internet radio in front of a Starbucks, didn't mm-hmm. know where we were going and you know how we were going to be manifested. Mm-hmm. And then here it is two years later, after showing the Lord that we are faithful, and dedicated to what we were doing, and he paid off. Well, you know, it's funny that you said, because the first thing I tried to think was, how did I end up meeting Eric? Eric Heffern, who's a, basically the, the, the uh, general manager, the man who's running Bridge Investments, who's basically financing this golf course, and I think it was through you. 
I think you're the one that heard about it. And you and I yeah, went together, right, right? And I didn't know Eric. I didn't even know we were going to think right. about a church there. I go mm-hmm. all I knew is I had a dream of putting a church because I love Moon yeah. Valley. Mm-hmm. I think it's a beautiful city. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I think it was you that says, "Well, we need to go and talk to these guys and see what happens." And from that day, which was two years ago, over two years ago, to today, the dream is coming to fruition. So, folks, when you pray in God's will, even though the timing may not be right, right timing, right. God is faithful. Yeah, because remember, uh, let me wrap that up just, just real quick. I'm going to tell you how, how it was. Because when you came over, you said, I have this you know, dream. Or I want to do this thing. Remember, we went and looked at different properties. We, over did. There? we did. And, you know, oh, they want this amount of money. They want this. You know, it, was, it wasn't feasible at the time. Mm-hmm. And we stayed dedicated. We did. We did, and, and and I think Eric and his team saw the vision, mm-hmm. and obviously uh, God, you know, I think put it in his heart because you got to understand, you know, Eric, you know, the last thing that he's going to think about is putting a church when you're right. talking about a fifty to hundred million dollar project. Mm-hmm. That's not the yeah, first in his mind. Mm-hmm. But like I mentioned a couple uh, last week, you know, he finally mentioned that he's excited about putting a church. Yeah. He said that in the community meeting. Mm-hmm. So this is God working. This is nothing I've done. Nothing Donovan's done. It's God working mm-hmm. through the hearts. Uh, the leadership of this uh, golf course and 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 uh, apartment building complex, and then hopefully spreading it out to the uh, the, the residents in that area. So I'm excited. I'm excited. God's got a great plan, and, and now the hard work begins. Yeah, and now the hard <laughs> now the hard work begins. But again, we're just gonna keep praying, and we're gonna pray that God just continues to go forward and lead the way. All right. Yeah. And and so we're gonna go into the. Yeah, we. I want to start progressive. Yeah, we're gonna do. Um, um, I want to call it my part two of, of what we talked about last week. And what I'm looking at is that again, our our goal here is to just to get you thinking and understanding the idea of being a progressive society, which I'm assuming you know, 21st century we are a progressive society. Millennials are different than the older age groups. I understand that. But in regard to progressivism going forward, when it comes to the Bible. Uh, those are that's an oxymoron, and the reason why it is is because God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. It doesn't matter if culture changes. It doesn't matter if we're progressing into new new ideas and new thinking. But the Bible stays the same. We talked about some sins that seems like you know up fifty to hundred years ago was taboo that we would never think would be an acceptable idea in society. That seems like that mental has changed quite a bit in the last 50 years. We're talking about abortion. When God is completely clear that life begins, um, it begins at conception. But it seems like in a lot of different phases, abortion is considered acceptable now, even to a lot of uh, mainline Christians. A couple weeks ago, we talked about fornication. The idea of living together prior to marriage. Which obviously, in God's, the way God describes that, he calls that sexual immorality. He calls that basically fornication is the idea of living not in a married situation, either through an affair or living together prior to marriage. Unfortunately, today, in today's world, that's socially acceptable. Matter of fact, you're looked upon strangely if you don't live together prior to marriage. But what does God say? God says that that is a sin, that only sexual um, um, uh, relations should be only between a husband and a wife under the umbrella of a marriage. And unfortunately, that's not the way it's acceptable in the other way. Then last week, I took a look, a close look at the, this idea of uh, pornography. Pornography is a $15 billion industry. I couldn't believe it when I read this, but over 70 million search queries is related to pornography daily. 70 million um, uh, searches for pornography websites. And I started thinking a little bit about this. And, you know, our goal here, again, is not to judge anybody. Our goal here, here, is not to say, oh, you're being a and look down upon him. But if you're struggling with any of these types of our goal is to build you up in Jesus Christ. To realize that, yes, you may have made a choice that may be against his word, but it's not the unforgivable choice. That God will forgive your sins, but we need to first recognize the idea that it is a sin. It doesn't matter if we're progressive or not, it's still a sin in the eyes of God. I just I thought about a little bit, what are the damages of pornography? A lot of people think it's a victimless crime. The idea of you know watching pornography within your own uh, room, your home, your bedroom, whatever. Who does it harm? Well, what I, what I learned is in regards to this, uh, first thing that harm is, is it increases marriage infidelity. 
you know, you're watching images on your computer or, or your, your TV or whatever, and of course, it increases the um, motivation to basically cheat on your husband, your wife, your spouse, or whoever. So it increases marriage infidelity. It decreases intimacy between husband and wife. I don't know if you knew this, Donovan, but 70% of divorces are related to pornography or affairs within the marriage. Wow. Normally, it starts with pornography, and then it elevates itself beyond that. The third thing damages a porn is the loss of jobs because you're viewing pornography at work. I read somewhere a statistic that 33% of office workers view pornography daily. Mm. 33%. Average time one hour and 38 minutes per month that workers on the job are viewing pornography at the workplace. That equates to over $16 billion of lost time because of people viewing it on work time. I've known so many people have lost their jobs because of this, and that's the dangers of viewing pornography. Uh, the fourth uh, impact is it's a huge impact to men and women. Uh, on uh, oh, their, their self-esteem, you know, when, how does this affect your spouse? How does it affect your children? The fact that you have to look at images on the computer because you feel that's more desirable than you know, your spouse that, that you're living with, which obviously affects their own personal self-esteem, so it has an emotional impact on the people that you live with. And then lastly, that a lot of people don't think about, how about the horrible effects of the people that's actually doing the pornography? The men and the women that's performing this porn activities, you know, for social media, for, for um, uh, computers, or even for videos or whatever. The impact, I, I actually read an interview of a, of a woman who was involved in pornography for many years. The shame, the guilt, all oh, the emotional mm -hmm. stress that she's done, it, it's just, it's just ama amazing. And you think, well, why would you do that? And, you know, we all make bad choices, so there's no judgment here. But the idea is it does cause damage in the long term. Right. So and nowadays it never goes away. It doesn't. It's getting worse. Yeah. Again, it's just so widespread. No, I'm just saying, like, your, an an your an anonymity. Uh-huh. You oh. you, you, it's always going to be there. It's exactly. always going to be there. So if you have children as they're growing up, hey, I saw your mom, or, you know. No question mom. about that. It, it never you, goes you away. You can't hide yeah. away from, from the computer, and it stays forever. So my point here is this. What does God say about pornography? It may be acceptable in society in regards to everybody's doing it, it's victimless, but from the eyes of God, it is not victimless. It does cause a lot of harm. There's a reason why God calls us an abomination or, or calls it a, um, a, a, a sin against Him because of the damage it does cause, not only to yourself, but to the people around you, and possibly it, it causes problems in regards to your job. So all I want to say, if you are struggling with pornography, first of all, no judgment, but we need to pray for you. Yeah. We need to first, any, with any sin, I am a huge sinner, unfortunately, so is Donovan. But the first idea is we need to recognize our sin. We need to realize that we're sinning not only against ourselves and maybe a, our spouse or our family, but more importantly, we're sinning against God and against God's Word. So here, we're just here to bring it out, and then the whole idea of repenting of what we now see as a sin, no matter if we're in a progressive society or not, and then ask God for forgiveness. So if you don't mind, I'm going to just do a quick prayer for any for this subject and anyone who's struggling with it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we again thank you so much for this opportunity to, uh, to pray to you, Lord, about this subject. Lord, pornography has gotten to be such a huge uh, issue, especially here in the 21st century, Lord. You know, back in the old days, Lord, it was almost uh, taboo to, to view pornography. And today, a click of a button and, and so many ways and images uh, to fill our minds in, in regards to this. Lord, I pray for anyone struggling uh, with pornography, Lord, viewing pornography, you know, addicted to pornography. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you touch their hearts. Let them realize, Lord, that, Lord, you are bigger than this. You're bigger than this issue, Lord, that it is not the unforgivable sin. Lord, that you will forgive, Lord, as long as we can recognize this sin and repent from it. So, Lord, I just pray for anyone who's struggling, Lord, that you will lift them up. Lord, that you'll touch their hearts. And I pray for those folks, Lord, that they will turn to you. Lord, that they will not go towards pornography, but they will lean all towards you, Lord, in lifting up and putting them away from this sin. And Lord, I pray for those that are victims, 
of pornography as, as contributors to it, Lord. Lord, that they would see what they're doing is just not the right way to live, Lord, because it has damaging effects for a long period of time. Lord, I pray that, Lord, again, that you will touch the, their hearts, Lord, and realize this is not what you need to do, and that they would turn from that lifestyle and go forward in you. Lord, we love you, Lord. Lord, you love us so much. Lord, you give us these rules and these things in your word for our benefit, for ours to be lifted up with. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we honor and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to look at a, a more um, we, what we would call progressive ideas in the 21st century that are now acceptable to society, but still not in the Word of God. We'll continue that series on this Pastor Don Weekly devotional uh, uh, podcast show next week. Next week. Um, I, I just got one question when it comes to the uh, pornography thing and people that, that might be struggling with it. My question is this. Uh, do, doesn't the Lord provide a solution for that in the Bible? Well, that's I mean, good. I mean, wouldn't that be like that? Why tells you to get married and in the marriage bed, you know, make make it, yeah, make yeah, yeah. And the Bible's full of verses like right. flee from sexual immorality right, and stuff like that. But, but I, again, I, I'm trying to understand, you know, why why do people turn towards pornography versus turning towards their spouse? Their spouse? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I I I I don't I don't have any of those yeah, excuses. I'm not 100 percent sure why. But I know they do, and I'm not blaming anybody for that. You know, they could blame on their sex lives may not be positive or maybe too infrequent, or there could be a lot of reasons why medical people could, situation, man, right. It could be so many reasons why people do. The problem is they're justifying it. Yeah. They're justifying the sin. Folks, I'm going to tell you this. When I was younger, I, I, I had a huge anger problem. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned that to you yeah. before. I mean, I would fly off the handle because I had no patience. Yeah, well, yeah. I still have no patience. patience. I just don't fly off the handle yeah. anymore. But okay. the, over every little thing. And it was a sin that I was struggling with. And you might think, oh my gosh, man, that's nothing compared to the pornography. That's not true. In the eyes of God, a sin is a sin. Mm -hmm. And that was my issue. It was a huge struggle. So, and I would never want anyone, yourself included, to judge me on my sin. So we don't judge anybody else right. in regards to the sin of pornography. But what we do need to recognize is that it is a sin. And we need to recognize that God gave us that spouse, that person to love for better, for worse, for worse, for, for the, and, 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 as long as we both shall live type thing. And it's between if we surrender our marriages to the Lord, if we surrender our sex lives to the Lord, mm -hmm. sexual relations with the Lord, God will open up the doors for that to be so beautiful, so fruitful, so bountiless. But we not need to allow. We need to allow God. To yeah, a lot of people have uh, made a comment. They would make a comment. Well, you know, prostitution is all in the Bible. It's the oldest profession in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, how do you answer that in in, in in reply to somebody who might have a pornography addiction or? A yeah, prostitution is the, probably the oldest, one of the oldest uh, professions uh, known to man. Mm -hmm. But the Bible's been pretty clear that prostitution is still a, a sin not against, against the God. You know, we talked. You know, we talked about Rahab that she was a prostitute yeah. and she's on the lineage uh, uh, from to, to the Messiah to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But it, but God never glorified the sin mm -hmm. of pornography. You know, type thing. It's still a sin, and you know, even though you know, again, just because we've been doing it for so many years doesn't make it right. It just makes it a prolonged sin that we haven't recognized right. needs to kind be of, repented yeah, on. It's kind of like slavery, you know, just because it was done for 300, 400 years doesn't make it right. doesn't mean that it will continue to go on and it's right thing to do. Right. So. And that's the thing. So again, if you're struggling with it or you know someone who's struggling with it, please don't judge them. Please don't, don't look down upon them. Just pray for them. Let them see the light. Let them find the, let them find God and repent of that sin. Yeah, and, and uh, like you said, uh, based on the statistics you said, uh, I'm not saying it's a bad situation. We're not judging you, mm -hmm. but but it does a lot of damage in your life. It does. If, uh, you know, if it you're is, if you have an addiction to it. There and and and, 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 and it's so easy to get addicted right. to porn. It's yeah. very very just like any other. Yeah, I I remember um, when computers were first coming online, and that shit's all we all. <laughs> the yeah. that was coming up, you mm -hmm. know, or the uh, cable when it came out and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, what, a TV online and a cable, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. um, but I remember, like, you would go to a library or something. I was going through college and stuff, and um, you would get on a computer, mm -hmm. and, like, you'd log on, and all of a sudden, all this, this you know, pornography mm -hmm. stuff would come on, because I guess the person that previously used it was watching. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes, and a lot of times you get these ads, 
I mean, you could just yeah. be doing your own thing. We're looking at mm-hmm. different things, and all of a sudden, these pop-up ads will yeah. come be, because that's what advertisers do. They want to suck you suck into you those into things. Yeah. And like I said, but again, God is bigger than all of that. And he's bigger than those temptations and urges. We yeah. just need to leave God. Um, a real quick story. I remember I was in the military, and we had a few uh, troops that were uh, caught, supposedly caught, on the internet with pornography, which is a no-no in the military, on mm-hmm. the base, whatever. You do what you want to do at your home. However, um, and it, I remember as the, as the officer in charge, they would come to me and they tell me what the charges were. And I said, wait a minute, the guy told me, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, personally, I had to believe him because when I was in college, he probably logged on and I, you know, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. It happened. But I'm telling you how serious it was. It and was not planned. So, uh, yeah. So whatever happened to him? Uh, I dismissed the charges because sure. knowing, okay. knowing from my experience in college that well, what happens if it, if it was true? Oh, so yeah, what, yeah, they're, 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 gone. they're out the door. I was yeah. going to say, so there is yeah, so yeah. much consequence yeah. to yeah. these bad choices of, of doing these things, so we need just to be cognizant of that. We need to really right. understand that. So we've only got a couple minutes left, and I just want to end with, um, you know, I, I, again, saying once, once more, this is not a political show, no. but, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in the... Um, in, in, in the euphoria of what's going on in this mm-hmm. world, especially in the United States, mm-hmm. you know, all the protests and the anger and the evil and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And I guess all I just want to say in regards to that, you know, there is there is a better way to voice your opinions and yes. stuff like that. And there's a better way to live versus always living frustrated, angry, um, uh, upset about everything that's going on in life. I know I've talked to so many people that are still struggling with their jobs. Mm-hmm. They hate their bosses. They hate the community. Mm-hmm. They hate everything. Yeah. Then you talk to them about the, the life. They hate their taxes. They hate the, the hate their, their wife. Hate their kids. Leadership. Yeah. They hate all. This. And it seems like everything's hate. Yeah. Everything's negative. It's like oh my gosh. It's like you can't yeah. you can't well, turn around. The tone I'll start at the top. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's true. true. Uh, that's true. Again, starts from the top everywhere. Not yeah, only the everywhere. top, top of the president of the United States, yeah, but the everywhere. top everywhere, including your, your bosses, house. your house, mm-hmm. your everything like that. And all I just want to ask you guys to do is let's just take a deep breath. <laughs> you know what? You know, this world is evil. God already predicted, prophesied that in his word. But you know, it doesn't mean it has to affect us in the way that it is. Sure. You know what? We can look at life and say, yeah, there's a lot bad going on. Your political views can be one way. It doesn't matter. There's evil and anger everywhere, everywhere. But it doesn't have to affect us. It doesn't. We could have, Donovan and I don't even agree on a lot right. of uh, political co- conversations that we have, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect him. We can still live in a way that brings nothing but joy and peace in our lives when we don't allow the noise right. around us to affect us. So I'm just asking you, because I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is because I it seems like the last yeah. couple of weeks has really been bad. Yeah. Everybody I talk to is just upset, angry. Upset. And then I go to Facebook, everybody's angry. angry. And I go around, around my neighborhood, everybody's angry. It's like and it's contagious. It is. It's like oh my gosh, man, you can't turn around. Somebody's not just ticked off about something. And I just want you, you know what? It doesn't need to be that way. Right. We need to just let God lead. Let God bring us the joy. Let God fill us with His Spirit. And we can enjoy life and not be so angry. Uh, real, real quick on Facebook, when all the anger, because I, I see it on my page and stuff, because like, I'm a political person, mm-hmm. and I always reply with a laugh, you know, that, that, that emoji that's like laughing. Sure. Mm-hmm. I always reply with that. People say, why are you always laughing at the thing? I said, because I don't want to get into, you know, you, I respect your opinion. I'm just going to laugh at it because that's all I can do. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I'm just going to laugh. And that's okay. You don't have to agree. But it, like he's saying, you don't have to let it affect you. Yeah. And it is affecting us. It's affecting the way we think, the way we live, how we treat our, our close friends and family. Mm-hmm. It's affecting life. And that's when it becomes And I laugh. And here's the truth of why I laugh. Because I know all this is supposed to come to pass. Exactly. So exactly. It doesn't matter. All this does not matter. It does. It really doesn't. So I'm just going to just say, folks, just relax. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy the fruits of the blessings of every single day, and don't get caught up in all the negative that's all around us. Because I'm going to tell you, yeah. it will consume you. Yeah, it it will definitely it consume will. you. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Pastor Don Weekly Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, again, we're going to get an introduction to the bold judgments of Revelation chapter 16. All right, any closing thoughts? All i got to say is everybody keep your head up, uh, pray, and be consistent in uh, your service to the Lord. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. Two and two.